Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this is going to be like a little two-part. Somebody asked me two questions in an email. First of all, they asked me how they could create this rectangle that has a tapered bottom that would be four inches on the top and two inches on the bottom and six inches tall. This is really easy. And then they also asked how they could center the text on the top part of that. So just draw a rectangle with your ratio unlocked. Draw a rectangle and then make the top four inches. Make this the length six inches. I always draw in the center of the page, so I hit P and put it in the center of the page. Go up to a range and convert it to a curve. Set your nudge distance on one inch. If you want, so this is four inches. If you want it two inches on the bottom, you would want to nudge it over one inch. Grab your shape tool, click on it, and click that node and use your right arrow key. Click on that node and use your left arrow key. Now you have that shape. I'm going to put P. It's still in the center of the page. He wants his text like a half inch off the top, but he wants it in the center. So that's why I draw in the center of the page. And if you also do this, you have your text selected. Hold down your shift key and select your item and hit T. That will put it to the top. Change your nudge factor to 0.5, which is a half of an inch. Grab your text and bring it down. Now that text is centered with the shape, and it's a half inch off the top. So if he was doing a lot, he could do the same thing. And also, once you have this, and you were going to change the name, he's making a deal for a party that's going to have like a roulette wheel. Control D. And move that out of the way and you can always go here and yours will be showing but it's at your edit text and you could type in anything here let's just get rid of that and just type in and then when you hit OK it's still going to be a half inch from the top and it's still going to be in the center and I'm also using Center Justified. So that's how I would do it if you were making a bunch of these and just keep making uh, copies of it. And don't forget to select it all and hit G, Control-G for Group. And also Control-G for Group. Now, if I was going to make a lot of these on a board to save wood, it's not going to save you any laser time. It's actually going to maybe make the laser time a little bit longer. But I would put that to the top of the left-hand corner. Let's edge it off just a half inch or so. And then take this one, but do not mirror it. Do not use the mirror. You On this, you need to rotate it 180 degrees. You can The text is still readable. And this way, it would save you a lot of wood. Now, it's going to take longer to engrave if you have a whole row of them because you've got a lot of dead space. But in this particular case, you could use color mapping that would make them faster. Or you could actually, in your print driver, you could, well, let's just do another one. Let's control D and make a duplicate of that. And let's move that over. And if I wanted to, to, to uh, make my engraving faster, I'll just run the job into engraving. You've still got dead space, but not near as much. And you could select that one and select that one. And then when you go to your print driver, I don't normally ever have a, a laser hooked up to this. But you could go right here to selection. It's not going to show up because I don't have the right paper size. Uh, let's change that to 40 by 28. And then those two items are the only thing it's going to print. That's not going to save you an awful lot of time. And then when you're ready to print the bottom, you can print the bottom. But it would save you, if you had a whole row of them, it would save you quite a bit of time. But the main concern I'm always looking for is saving me wood. Because this is going to take, on a whole row of them, it's going to take up quite a bit less space. Let's change this to a quarter of an inch and nudge this one over. Get them about the same. I'm going to hit T and put them all to the top of the page. Make them all equal. So let's just look. This thing is 
10.32 inches. If you didn't have that, if you put this back to zero, let's just see how big it would be if you were going to move it and not worry about the wood. This would engrave faster, but instead of being 3 point or 10.32, now it's 12.5 inches. You've wasted that much more wood. Hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.